Hello everyone. Welcome to the video demonstration of type 2 internal hemipelvectomy and mesh plasty. The case being demonstrated is that of a 52 year old female who presented to us with complaints of pain over the left hip region since the past 3 months. There was no history of fall or trauma, no constitutional symptoms. On examination, the left hip joint point was tender and the left hip terminal range of motion were painful and restricted. Following a J-natal biopsy, a diagnosis of grade 1 periacetabular chondrosarcoma was confirmed. There was no obvious changes seen in the plain radiograph of the pelvis. However, the CT scan showed signs of osteolysis over the medial aspect and superior aspect of the epistabulum. There was no articular breach or extension into the joint. The MRS scan also confirmed an osteolytic lesion which was extending superiorly into the iliac plate and inferiorly into the superior pubic rami and to the superior aspect of the ischium. There was no intrapelvic extension or joint contamination seen. We first got the 3D virtual model ready after fusing the, the MRI and CT scan of the patient. These are the superior and side views of the pelvis and these are the anterior, posterior and oblique view demonstrating the tumor extent. After discussing the case in the sarcoma tumor board, patient was planned for type 2 internal hemipelvectomy. These were the planned cuts. Pubic cut along the superior pubic rami. This is the ischial cut which was planned. And then the iliac cut. The iliac cut had to extend into the sciatic notch. To perform these cuts, 3D printed custom made patient specific cutting guides were used. This was the guide which was designed for the pubic cut and this is the guide which was designed for the iliac cut. This was the 3D printed tumor model and the cutting jigs. A transparent pelvis model was obtained as most of the tumor tissue was intraosseous with minimal extraosseous extension. The line in yellow color demonstrate the cuts which was planned. These are the jigs on the left hand side. These were the planned line of incisions with the patient in right floppy lateral position. A triradiate incision was planned which extended from the pubic symphysis all the way up till the anterior superior iliac spine. Superiorly, the, ex the, the incision extended along the iliac crest and inferiorly, the incision came down over the la anterior and lateral aspect of the thigh. The horizontal incision constitutes the ilioinguinal approach and the lower aspect of the vertical incision constituted the iliofemoral approach. First the horizontal incision was taken and the ilioinguinal dissection was completed before proceeding posteriorly. Femoral neurovascular bundle was first isolated and pr protected. For the posterior approach, a thick flap was retained so as to minimize the complication of wound dehiscence and necrosis. Some fibers of the gluteus maximus along with the inferior gluteal vessels were retained with the flap. Once the posterior flap was elevated, anteriorly the anterior superior iliac spine, the gluteus medius and the minimus muscles arising from the ilium and getting attached to the greater trochanter was identified. Posteriorly, the gluteus maximus fibers were released off the IT band.
posterior dissection was further continued by resecting the short external rotators as close to the pelvis as possible so as to protect the underlying sciatic nerve. GT osteotomy was then done to flip the gluteus medius and minimus insertions and so as to expose the posterior ilium. Once the GT osteotomy was completed and the fibers of the gluteus medius were elevated, the tumor area which was along the quadrangular plate was identified. This is a rough pictorical representation showing the ilium, anterior superior iliac spine and anterior inferior iliac spine anteriorly and posteriorly showing the sciatic nerve and the ischium. This is the on table representation of the same where you can see the sciatic nerve posteriorly, anterior superior iliac spine anteriorly, the osteotomized greater trochanter inferiorly. This formed the main area of tumor mass posteriorly. Once the posterior dissection was complete, hip capsulotomy was performed to dislocate the hip joint so as to gain access to the ischium. Once the posterior ileum was completely skeletonized, anterior dissection was performed to push the pelvic and abdominal contents anteriorly and then the cutting jig was placed over the posterior aspect of the ileum. So this is the posterior iliac jig which we had planned and this is the attachment of the jig on the posterior ileum. Ileum was then cut with striker precision saw blade which minimizes the oscillatory movements. The jig was designed in such a way that the precision blade snugly went into the cutting jig to cut the ileum. The jig was fixed to the native ileum using three K wires. Once the posterior iliac cut was complete, anteriorly the superior pubic ramma was cut using a micro saw after isolating and protecting the neuro femoral neurovascular bundle. The steel cut was then performed to resect the tumor mass in toto. Special consideration was taken while resecting the sacrospinous ligament just anterior to the sciatic nerve. This is the tumor bed post resection of the tumor mass with the GT osteotomy closed and the GT osteotomy open. With the osteotomy open, you can identify the femoral head and the posterior sciatic nerve. All the vessel branches which are exiting from the sciatic notch here, including the muscle supply of the gluteus medius, were retained. To reconstruct the hip joint, mesh plasty was performed. First, the GT osteotomy was secured using screws. Then a proline mesh was used to stabilize the proximal femur, which was then passed through the hole made in the remaining ileum and wound upon itself with multiple interrupted proline sutures and whip stitches. This stabilized the proximal femur or the femoral head with the remaining ileum and prevented inferior translation of the limb. This is how the proline mesh reconstruction or, or mesh plasty was performed. Primary closure was achieved over suction drain. This was the post-operative radiograph. 
patient was put on a hip spica for six weeks and toe touch ambulation was initiated on post operative day three. Currently, the patient is ambulating with the help of walker support without any signs of wound dehiscence or local recurrence. Thank you for your patient listening.